Welcome to this, the next edition of our daily devotions coming to you from Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. We're glad you found us and we hope that you'll feel free to share these reflections with people you know. Let's just take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds by listening to some beautiful music. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture today is taken from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 56. Hear the word of God. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, Well, how many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people and divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of the fish. Those who had eaten loaves numbered five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, where he dismissed the crowd. And after saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. 
When evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And when he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and he cried and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. And when they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring <clears throat> the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, time for a little show and tell. I'm guessing that many of you have seen this picture. It's actually a photograph. I always thought it was a painting. It's taken by Eric Enstrom, and it was taken around the year 1918. It shows a man named Charles Wilden who lived in Bovey, Minnesota, Charles was a peddler of sorts, never made a lot of money. He lived in an old sod house. Enstrom had invited him to his studio to serve as a model for this picture. We know very little about Mr. Wilson. And in fact, there's very little record of his life after this picture. The picture itself depicts something perhaps true to him, and that is that the simple meal he has before him in the picture was likely much the simple meal he always had before him. And before this simple meal, he's just simply bowing and praying. A Bible's on the table depicting the word of God, the bread of life. The title of the photograph, as given by Mr. Enstrom, is simply Grace. And it suggests, among many things, that grace and gratitude begin with the most basic of things, a simple meal and the word of God. When Mr. Enstrom discovered that many had interest in the picture, he sought out Mr. Wilson and got him to sign his rights away. He paid the peddler $5 to make the picture his entirely. And for the rest of his life, the picture of grace afforded him a modest and perpetual sum. This meal comes to mind when I think of the stories that we just read from Mark chapter 6 that include the miracle of Jesus turning a little lunch into a feast for 5,000. There's a lot to be said about Jesus' miraculous power to carry out such an act, and, and there's also something to be said about how grace can turn a simple meal into a feast. Mr. Wilden bows before a simple meal, but his prayer treats it like a feast. Jesus would have us look at the simple things and treat them like a miracle, an overflowing bounty. Consider the lilies of the field, he says, and sees how they are adorned no less than, the Sol than Solomon the king. And see the birds of the air who always seem to have enough to eat. Uh, look at this little bit of fish and bread and give thanks that they fill your belly. Amazing what a little grace and gratitude can do to change the meagerest of situations. She gets us thinking about the disciples tossed and turned by the sea and, and that they're afraid and they're not sure what's going to happen. And then a slight glimpse of Jesus, Jesus walking on the water, just a glimpse of Jesus. And it could have been for them a reminder that they were not alone and that God would provide like he did with those loaves and fish. But instead, they can't believe their eyes and grow more afraid. But just a little bit of grace and a little bit of gratitude might have changed their whole observation of the moment. Which brings to mind a poem by Mary Oliver called Summer's Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? The grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who's gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes, 
Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? To recite Mary Oliver's poetry is to be struck by the simplest of things, to see grace in just about everything and through her words express gratitude. It all begins, doesn't it, in the simplest of things, grace before a simple meal, to turn it into a feast. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the simple things and are grateful, oh Lord, that you Fill them into a feast simply by our gratitude. So help us, O oh Lord, to find in you and all those simple things of life that we may discover the bounty that is before us. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen.